please stand as you are willing and able to sing our um, opening song, Enter, Rejoice, and Come In, number 361 in this hymnal. Rejoicing, come in. Enter, rejoicing, come in. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoicing, come in. Open your ears to the song. Open your ears to the song. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoicing, come We bid you welcome. We do not ask what you believe or expect you to think in a certain way, but only that you try to live a kindly and helpful life with the dignity proper to a human being. Welcome all who believe that religion is wider than any sect and deeper than any set of opinions. Welcome all who might find in our friendship strength and encouragement for daily living. Good morning. My name is Barb Eglinton. I'll be your service leader today. My pronouns are she, her. Thank you for spending your Sunday morning with us, whether you're here in person or online. And we'd like to extend a special welcome to any visitors today. After the service, we invite you to stay for a very special day. We're doing a history workshop right after the service downstairs. And um, it's a potluck. And everyone's welcome, whether you brought food or not. And this morning, we are delighted to have our younger congregants join us for this multi-generational service. This is a time for us to be together in ritual and song, moving our bodies and celebrating the joys of our diverse community. Joys and sorrows will be shared later in the service. You can come up to the microphone or you can text your joy or sorrow to the number in the order of service. Now please take a moment to silence your phones, but don't turn them off. And if you are willing, share that you are joining us on social media today. And now, are there any announcements? Good morning, Marie Laurie, Social Justice. Tonight at 7 o'clock in Adams Hall, we will kick off our Good Trouble UU the Vote letter writing and postcard writing. Please join us there. Um, if you have kids who want to color and decorate postcards, I'm told that that's really an effective way of getting the message out, so please bring your kids if they can stay up that late um, and let them help us. And in two weeks, we'll also be in Adams Hall again to watch the movie Survivor Story about the residential schools, specifically the one in Mount Pleasant, so please join us then again, but especially tonight. Thanks. Hi, Barb Eilvan, she, her, and uh, also part of Social Justice. I'm very excited to announce, in case you haven't read your magnet yet, um, next month brings the return of the butterfly, which is our, um, our event that is akin to NPR's The Moth. So we look forward to, to hosting that, and it is on Friday, May 17th, and doors open at 6.30. So it's always been, this is the sixth year, it's always been such a great event. You'll hear from speakers uh, that attend UUCF here. So it's really a great night. So keep that in mind. Friday, May 17th. Thank you. Um, hello, Yvonne with Social Justice, and I... 
Um, there's two things. Uh, first of all, I wanted to remind everyone that the, the Crop Hunger Walk is coming up on May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. And um, first of all, 75% um, of the funds raised goes to Church World Service, which does good works all around the world. And 25% goes to five local food pantries. And um, you see me after uh, down at Adams Hall if you're interested in signing up to be a walker. Um, we start at 1 o'clock in downtown Farmington. Um, so it, I, I would like, it, um, and thank you to everyone that's um, contributed already, but you're still, there's still time for you to contribute. Um, and I would ask that anyone that's going to walk this year in the Crop Hunger Walk, if you could stand up so you can see people that you can contribute to. So, so thank you. <laughs> anyways, um, anyways um, I already went over time, but I wanted to talk about what, uh, had a great speaker talk about all the things that Church World Service is doing all over the world. Maybe I'll do that next Sunday. But, um, and then the other thing is I wanted to let you know I, I have letters too, um, to your members of Congress in support of the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, TB, and Malaria, which has already saved 59 million lives, and also in, in support of maternal and child health. So you can see me downstairs in Adams Hall. Thanks. Well, May sounds like a busy month. So also in May on the 12th, which is a Sunday, we will be having a multi-congregational service over at First UU in Detroit. That will be with them and also with Northwest and ourselves. So what we are asking from all of you guys is to fill out the survey in our e-blast if you would like to carpool, as in drive, or if you would like to carpool and ride. And if you would just like to come in general, please fill that out for the multi-general service. I'm all take congregational service on the 12th. Thank you. Good morning. You're probably getting tired hearing announcements. I'll make this very brief. Um, just for a reminder, next Sunday is the deadline for getting your pledge in. Please, if you haven't pledged, get it in. We have about 60% of the pledges in, and we're about two-thirds there. So it's kind of on par. Um, if you have already pledged, I see Betty here, um, if, if you have pledged in the last two weeks and you have a flame, come on up and put it on the, the banner in the front of the, the church. Um, Denise and Betty, Marshall, come on up. I have your pledge, I have yours here, I didn't see you earlier. If there's anyone who has pledged that I didn't give a flame to today, come up. Oh, Marion, I didn't write yours. I have to write one. Okay. okay. Here, here, no, come on up, Marion. What? I need a pen right here. I don't have, they're in my, Brian has them. Okay. Come. I know. These are people who aren't here. I'm going to put their flames up. Big thank you to everybody who's pledged already this year. And to back up, Karen, if you have not pledged, please do so. Don't have fundraising call you and hunt you down. <laughs> Do you have an announcement? I do. Okay. Yep. And one last announcement from the board. Um, this year for General Assembly, which is the last weekend in June, um, General Assembly will be completely virtual this year. UUCF gets three delegates, three, I can hold my fingers up, three delegates to vote on the business issues of the larger organization. If you are interested in being a delegate, there is an application. Uh, you can find the link in your e-blast to be a delegate candidate. Any member in the congregation can apply to be a delegate. And then we will be voting on the delegates who will be representing us at GA. We'll make those votes at the congregational meeting, which is May 19th. So save the date for the congregational meeting. Thank you. And check the e-blast and the website for additional announcements.
Good morning, everybody. There's a lot happening here. Let's take all that energy in and feel ourselves being reconnected to what is happening here in our worship service today. Our opening words, our chalice lighting words, come from Margaret Keep. They write, as surely as we belong to the universe, we belong together. We join here to transcend the isolated self, to reconnect, to know ourselves to be at home, here on earth, under the stars, linked with each other. Let us now join in our affirmation of mission, which is on the inside of your order of service. We seek answers everywhere, include everyone, and live with compassion. Good morning, friends. My name is Corey Cortez. I am the RE coordinator here, and um, my pronouns are she and her. So this year, we are exploring many values that are important to us as you use. They're like gifts our faith gives to us and asks us to give to the world. This month, we are exploring the gift of interdependence. So with that in mind, let's see what is in our gift box today. Do you want to come help me hold this up? Matt, you want to come up and help me hold this? Thank you. Thank you. OK, show, turn this way so everybody can see it. Hold it up. Can you hold it up high for me? All right. It's a net. <laughs> Stickies on it. Yeah, with stickies on it. You are right. What gift could this object give us a clue about? What might it have to do with interdependence? Does anybody have an idea? Any of my young friends here have an idea of what this net might have to do with interdependence? Arlo? Catch fish. Oh, catching fish. Hey, that's a good guess. I've gone fishing. You've gone fishing? It's fun to go fishing, huh? Cool. It might help us if we know what the word, it might help us if we know what the word independence means. Very cool. Does anybody have any ideas what interdependence means? Tell ya. Okay, so you hear the word independent in there, which means to do something by yourself. So what does interdependence mean? Well, we, when we are interdependent, it means we all depend on each other and the earth to be able to live. So let's see. Let's, can I see that net here now? Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you may have a seat. Thank you for being my helper. <clears throat> Depending on each other means we need each other. It means that we are all connected. And what impacts one of us impacts all of us. Just like the strands of this net, they are all connected. And we are all connected. So with the help of our friend, Barb, and some of our young people, we are going to share a story about interdependence. In a shady glade, the chief of the jungle slept until Gecko, gecko, gecko. Tiger woke up with a snort and he opened one yellow eye. <clears throat> gecko, he growled. What do you want? It's the middle of the night. I have come to complain. What gecko the lizard, what would gecko the lizard have to complain about? He spent most of his time lazing around, just sleeping and eating. Even when he was hungry, all he has to do is stick out his sticky tongue and lick up a mosquito. What's troubling you, Tiger asked. It's the fireflies, said Gecko. All night long they fly around, flashing their lights in my eyes, flashing and flickering. I haven't slept for days. It's making me grumpy. You're the chief of the jungle. Make them stop. Tiger stifled a gigantic yawn. <sighs> I'll talk to the fireflies, he promised Gecko. 
Tiger sighed and set off to find the fireflies. Wading through the wet paddy fields, the night vibrated with chirps and croaks of frogs and the trills of millions of insects. Above the paddies, the fireflies flickered and flashed. Fireflies. Gecko says you've been disturbing his sleep. Flashing and flickering all night long. Woo! Oh, uh -oh. <laughs> I'm tired still. <laughs> Is this true? Well, we flash our lights all night, replied the fireflies, but we don't want to disturb anyone. We're just passing on Woodpecker's message. We heard him drumming out a warning. I see, said Tiger. Then I'll talk to Woodpecker. At the edge of the paddies, Tiger found Woodpecker drumming against a coconut palm. Rat-a-tat-tat, rat-a-tat-tat, rat-a-tat-tat. Woodpecker, the fireflies say you have been rapping and tapping, tapping and rapping, drumming out a warning. Is this true? Of course, said Woodpecker, puffing up his feathers. I provide a great service. Clearly, my efforts are not appreciated. He looked down at his long beak at Tiger. Beetle rolls manure right across the path. I warn the jungle animals so that no one steps in it. Without my drumming, who knows what a mess you would all be in. Oh, well, that's very helpful. Thank you. Tiger licked his nose thoughtfully. I'll go speak to Beetle. It was easy to spot Beetle Come on the jungle path. The in the moonlight, his back gleamed like polished metal. <laughs> <clears throat> What's all this, Tiger asked. Woodpecker says you're rolling filthy mess all over the place. Yes, can't stop. Beetle replied, rolling a dung, uh, ball of dung right up to Tiger's paw. Water buffalo said drops piles of it all over the path. If I don't move some away, there'll be muck everywhere. Excuse me. Tiger lifted his paw and the beetle bustled by. <laughs> ah, okay. Thank you, beetle. I'll go see the buffalo. Tiger found buffalo sleeping in a pool of mud. <clears throat> Buffalo, Tiger roared. Beetle says you have been leaving your manure all over the path. Is this true? Oh yes, lowering his head. I leave manure all over the path, sir. But you see, it's helpful. Rain washes holes in the ground every afternoon. I leave manure only to fill up the hole so that no one trips or falls. If I didn't, sir, someone could get hurt. I see. Well, that was very thoughtful of you, Buffalo. Tiger's tail switched. He was beginning to lose patience. He sighed. <sighs> I'll go ahead and hear what Rain has to say. Tiger set off for Mount Agung the highest peak on the island, and the home of rain. The tiger climbed and climbed and climbed. He climbed through the jungle, woodland and scrub, and then he climbed some more. At last, his claws clattered onto the smooth grass of the mountain peak. He stopped to catch his breath. He looked down the mountain. The sun was rising. Tiger stared. Jungle spread out for miles around, flamboyant with flowers, wild orchids, climbing, lilies, trumpets of violet, blue, and starbursts of, starbursts of brilliant flame red. Tiger sniffed. He smelt jasmine, yingying, and frangipani. He swiveled his ears. He heard newborn streams of trickling and tinkling. And below the jungle, on the green gold steps of the paddy fields, he could just make out the faint flicker and flash of the fireflies. No need to ask why rain rains, Tiger smiled. 
He cooled his paws in the stream and watched for a while. He watched the water journey from the mountain to the sea, sustaining every living thing on its way, even the tiniest mosquito. Tiger plunged his nuzzle into the clear, fresh water and drank. Then he began the long journey down the mountain, through the forests and jungles and paddies to find Gecko. It was dusk by the time Tiger found the lizard again. Well, Gecko demanded, did you talk to the fireflies? <clears throat> They're still flashing and flickering on and on. Did you tell them to stop? Gecko, said Tiger. He sat down on his haunches and spoke very slowly. <laughs> Listen carefully. The fireflies flash to pass on Woodpecker's message. Woodpecker warns everyone not to step in beetle's dung. Beetle clears up the excess dung left by buffalo. Buffalo leaves manure on the path to fill up the holes made by rain. Rain makes holes in the path as he creates streams and lakes and puddles. Puddles where mosquitoes live. Oh, said Gecko. Gecko, what do you eat? Mosquitoes. So, if rain stopped raining, yes. buffalo could stop filling holes. Uh-huh. And beetle could stop rolling dung. Yes. And woodpecker could stop drumming. Yes. Yes, gecko. And the flyer flies, they could stop flashing. That's right, gecko. But I would have nothing to eat. Exactly. Gecko, everything in this world is connected. Go and live in peace with the fireflies. So Gecko stuck himself upside down underneath the branch of a tree. He closed his eyes and went to sleep. The fireflies flickered and flashed, and Tiger snored. <laughs> Now we will sing the first section of Turn the World Around. This can be found in your order of service. Part one. be playing a game called the web of life. Some of you may have played this before. We will be forming four groups. I think four will be able to do four. So uh, one half, I, I'm thinking maybe if we have 12 in each group that would work. So one half here, one half here, and then one half in the back, one half in the back. So, or not half, I guess it's Course. <laughs> Quarters. Thank you. <laughs> I was not a math major. Um, <laughs> all right, so um, if you could kind of maybe, well, in a minute after I tell you what's going to happen, um, think about which group you're going to be in. So, and I'll, I'll help with that as well. So, what we're going to do is we're going to form groups and you'll each receive a bag. And in the bag is a ball of yarn, and some cards, okay? And everybody should have the tree as the first card. The rest of them, it doesn't really matter. So at least we have the first person that's gonna start the game is gonna be the tree, 
okay? And the person who gets the tree, doesn't matter who it is, is gonna hold the ball of yarn. And what we do is we look at everybody's card that you're holding up, and we need to try to find out ways in which you're connected. So if you're the sun, maybe you are connected to the tree, right? Because the sun needs tree, the, the tree needs the sun to grow, all right? So there will be several cards like that, and everybody's gonna hold on to the string. So the tree will have the ball of yarn, and it's gonna hold on to a piece of that string and give the ball of yarn to somebody else that is in the circle that has a card that they are connected to. And they will hold the string and give the ball of yarn to the next person that is connected. Yes, everybody got it? Okay, so let's do that. Now I'm gonna pass these out and we will, I think we can do uh, four. So here's for, for this front group, maybe we can, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, this should be good here. And then, Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, this will be good here if you guys can all kind of get together. So here's this. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay. If you got, yeah, maybe like from here to the back here. And then if you guys want to join the front there, that would be good. Okay? And I'll kind of be talking as we, as we go along. But yeah, you're going to have to... So you're all going to be you're all going to be together. So yeah. if you can, yeah, okay. I just want to make sure. Yep, you could stay right there. <laughs> Look, I'll come around. Experiment. To be with we'll see what happens. <laughs> Was that a real yawn? It might have been. <laughs> okay, you put your mask down and go over and join the join the circle here. Okay, go join the circle. Come on. Join, come join the circle. You want to join this circle? You can join this circle. Yeah, we got Okay. You got to hold, hold your, hold your, um, here. You want to come in here? Yes. Yeah, go in here. Okay, we have a flower over here too, and we have a river over here too. A flower and a river. And don't don't move. You want it, yeah. And don't like don't don't move to go okay. to it. We can bring the we can bring the string to you. Uh, okay. Somebody's got extra card here, right here. Here, son. Or ask for a card. Of, Say, can I have a card, please? Ah. Uh, he has river. And Maya needs a okay, card. Okay, but I'm too. going to Paul. Paul Flower. I have butterfly that's going to connect to your, the flower. Yeah, because yeah. the tree. Maybe you should stand here between Matt and Brian. Oh, wait, wait, what about the dead leaf? What, what do we have here, the dead leaf? Ooh. Yeah, so where's the soil? Oh, you got, okay, you already got that. Do you want a card? Do you have a card, Colin? Do you guys have a card? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, just pass them out first. Yes. Just pass them out first. That way, because we want it to go crisscross. <laughs> and well, the, the frog gets the And then let me know when you guys are done. Yes. Let me know when you're done. Don't drop it. Just stay. Let me know when you guys are done, okay? Don't, don't move when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Are you guys done? You guys are done? Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Oh, wait, we got, what do you have? Oh, mushrooms. Mushrooms grow on trees. There you go. Try to, try to kind of keep it tight a little bit. Yeah, little we do bit. have to keep it tight. <laughs> no, it doesn't have to be too tight, but... All right. All right. You guys are almost done? All right. Oh, sorry. Uh, well, the
the grass grows around the tree, right? <laughs> are you guys almost done? You're working on it, huh? Okay. Are you guys almost done? Or are you working on it? You're not even. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. It does don't rush. I just wanted to I just wanted to see where you're at. It's getting annoying. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think they're almost, you're, you guys almost got it? All right. I'll give you guys a few more minutes. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk, all right? I'm gonna go up here and, and talk so you guys can see me and hear me. So, I know the back, uh, in, our, in our right corner here, we're having a little bit of, they're still working, so. Um, but it looks like most of us completed something. What does this look like we have built? A web. A web. It looks like a web, right. So now look around. All right, so look around your circle. You can see how everybody, everybody has a part of this web, right? OK. You may notice that your organism is also connected to another multiple organisms in the web that has been formed. So the tree, the grass, um, all living things need the sun, right? The rain, um, not just one thing, but several. Now, as most of you know, we have seen a decline in our bee population over the years. If you were the bee, raise your hand if you had the bee card. Okay. So I need everybody to be pretty still for this next part of the game. And what I want the bees to do is to tug on, everybody else be really still, I want the bees to tug on their string. There you go. Now. Did any of you in the circle feel that tug? You felt that vibration. All right. So that was the disturbance in the web. This demonstrates how a decline in population of bees can be felt or can affect others in the web of life. Now let's see what would happen if bees became extinct. So if you're a bee, drop your, uh, drop your string. Just drop it completely. All right, so all the bees in the circle drop their string. Now what happened? That's right. So the flowers drop your string. Yeah, not so stable anymore, is it? And whoever's connected to the flower, drop your string too. Yeah, the butterflies, for sure. So you see, what started as a disturbance in the web has now turned into a collapse in parts of the web. This shows how closely organisms in the ecosystem interact with each other. And it's OK. <laughs> Anything that happens to the part of the web has an effect on the whole system. So thank you for being a part of this demonstration. I know it was uh, sometimes a little uncomfortable and annoying. I heard the word annoying. <laughs> but remember, interdependence takes patience too, right? So you can place all the items. Don't worry about getting it back into a perfect ball. Just put that yarn all back in the bag. And they'll be collected. And we will move on to our joys and sorrows. Thank you. Was that fun?
We make space today for authentic and vulnerable sharing, which helps to build this congregation into beloved community. We invite you to share what's going on in your life, to name your feelings and the people on your heart and in your prayers with good energy, best wishes, and other help. We invite you to get into your body and investigate what emotions are you're experiencing, to share them as you feel called to, so that we can help hold your joy, your grief, in be with our feelings. You are welcome to come and pick up a stone or multiple stones from the table, infuse or charge it with your joys and sorrows, and place it in the singing bowl, where its energy will ripple out to be held by all of us. If you'd like to verbally share something important on your heart, please come and speak directly into the microphone. If you have, there, I looked at the um, tablet, there are no texts, um, joys and sorrows today.
Day of our hearts, one for the joys, one for the sorrows, and one for the strength of this gathered community that can support you and bring you peace. Now we'll sing part two of Turn the World Around from your order of service. Let me start again. This whole year we have been reflecting on six values with love at the center. I think we revisited love twice. These six values are a big part of our faith, things we believe in and try to live by. Does anybody know what it means to try to live by something you believe in? Can anybody describe what that means? Hard. Would you say hard? Yes, it is very hard. Yes. Like yes, your actions. Yes, if you believe something, you act a certain way in the world. So for this month of April, like we said earlier from our gift box, that we are going to be talking about interdependence. At this year's General Assembly, the annual gathering of Unitarian Universalists which will be completely virtual, so if you have the time, that time is uh, and some money. There's a registration fee that anyone can attend. No traveling is required. There will be a vote on changing a section of the Unitarian Universalist Association Governance Bylaws, and this section is called Article 2. One of the proposed changes is moving from our current seven principles to these six values. Interdependence is one of these values. So, Corey, what is the proposed language with the value of interdependence? Interdependence. We honor the interdependent web of all existence. We covenant to cherish Earth and all beings by creating and nurturing relationships of care and respect. With humility and reverence, we acknowledge our place in the great web of life and we work to repair harm and damaged relationships. You know, that sounds an awful lot like our current seventh principle, mm -hmm. which says, respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. But the current seventh principle doesn't require us to do anything other than respect. Now, respect isn't nothing, it's not a nothing, but it, it stops right there. So I think that's interesting. Can you tell us again what the new language says about things we need to do? But before that, it sounds like there are some verbs in that section. Are there any young people who can tell us what the word verbs means? What is a verb? I see a hand. Talia? It's an action word. Is that what you're going to say? The action in a sentence. The action in a sentence, yes. That is what a verb is. So what are some of the verbs in this statement? <clears throat> some of the verbs in this statement, honor, covenant, cherish. Then it says creating and nurturing relationships of care and respect. Then it describes the relationship using the words humility and reverence. 
And it goes on to say, we acknowledge our place in the great web of life. Wait, it goes on to say that acknowledging our place in the great web of life, we work to repair harm and damaged relationships. What does it mean to work to repair harm or work to repair damaged relationships? Can any adults help us out? Have any adults ever had to repair a damaged relationship? <laughs> Forgive. Forgive. Yeah. The first thing is real, realization. Realization. Communicate. Communicate. Understanding. Understanding. Yeah. Accept. Yeah, so there's a lot of work that goes into repairing and uh, repair harm and damaged relationships, isn't there? Yes. It seems that this proposed language requires us to do something. It's an action word. It moves us from merely respecting, and again, respecting is not nothing, to doing active work of honor, covenant, cherish, repair harm, and repair damaged relationships. Wow. And thinking about the grumpy gecko story earlier, I, I just love that story because Gecko, man, he gets so frustrated because of those flashing fireflies, but he has to learn that everything really is connected. And then again, with our game earlier and thinking about what happens to the bees if the bees drop out, we really are not only interconnected, but interdependent. It's hard for us you use because, partly because we're used, but partly because we grow up in this culture that tells us we have to have our bootstraps and we're all independent. So we have to like move away from that and think about what does it look like to be vulnerable, to ask for help, to actually reach out and care and listen to each other. You know what? This sounds like a lot of work. <clears throat> what do you think? Can we actually do this? I think by working together, supporting each other and listening to each other, we can covenant to create and nurture relationships of care and respect. It'll take patience and understanding, but I believe we you use, if anyone, can do it. Thank you. So speaking of interdependence, we are now moving to our monthly time of hearing from members. Liz Knight will now share her membership moment. My name's Liz Knight, and if you don't know me, I'm the current board president here at UUCF. But prior to this, I had never been president of anything. <laughs> In this congregation, I found that people are willing to hear your ideas. They're eager to have you join their conversation. People are encouraging and supportive of your perspective and your energy. I wonder if I never volunteered to coordinate interviews for a religious education opening. If Ann Ford never caught me in the office and asked, uh, hey, I hear you're good at computers. If Barb Eglinton hadn't supported my many suggestions for guest speakers, if Reverend Leonetta hadn't trusted me to schedule and choose alternative services for the summer that we paved the parking lot, and if Linda Brown hadn't encouraged me to join the board, would I have been able to make all the friends and connections I have here today? Would I have grown so much as a person and as a leader? I've learned here when to weigh in, how to let go, how to listen and invite opinions that differ from my own, how to delegate and encourage others, and why it's important to look at the big picture beyond what my white, cis, non-allergic Christian upbringing gave me before I got here. I grew up in the Roman Catholic faith, but to be honest, it's been this unconventional, pluralistic community that finally made me feel comfortable and confident in my upbringing. This allows me the comfort to offer prayers to Jesus and Mary, as well as Odin and Freya, Lakshmi and Vishnu, Mother Earth, the moon, especially on the eve of tomorrow with the eclipse, Eid, spring, so many things, and of course my ancestors. I don't feel judged here for the prayers that I offer or for my ideas. This congregation is a really unique place. There are not many places like it in the world today. A few months back, we had a guest speaker here, Kiana Denae, and she gave a sermon on radical hospitality. 
I was so struck listening to her because I felt that it encapsulated so much of what we believe and what we're trying to do here at UUCF in Unitarian Universalism as a whole. It's what makes this place so important to me. She noted radical hospitality does not stop at the door. It is not simply welcoming people as they come in and saying good morning. It is the culture of our community. It's how people see us and interact with us. I find newer families are the people who have the best, the best observations, the best outlook on how the rest of UUCF presents itself today. In that, I often ask leaders and others to welcome new faces, talk to someone new at coffee hour, encourage new energy and new ideas. Because it was not so long ago that the new person was me. In my first year, I expressed an interest in helping to select a new RE coordinator. My relationships in this community and my personal and spiritual growth have come from putting myself out there. In committee work, in welcoming each other's ideas and energy in this inclusive, radical way, UUCF, we grow this community together to what we want it to be, for ourselves today and for those who will walk through the door tomorrow. I was welcomed into the decision-making positions in this community by so many of you. So if you're newer here and you have an idea, a curiosity, an interest in anything here, I encourage you, find a group, a committee, volunteer to build this place better for the next person who walks through the door looking for that radically welcome uniqueness in this world today. I'm not asking you to be board president, <laughs> but I am telling you that my time volunteering here as a member has enriched me heart, mind, and soul. And if you're not a new face, I ask you to encourage and support the new ideas you hear around you. UCF is full of people with great ideas and energy. And it's when we support each other in the webs you saw today that we can build a place that's welcoming to all. Thank you for supporting and believing in me. Thank you, Liz. Our congregation is entirely self-governed by a democratic process. One of the privileges of our free church tradition is to provide all of the financial support of our many ministries from among ourselves. Generosity, therefore, is one of the spiritual values we recognize as central to our personal and institutional well-being. You are now invited to participate in the blessing of giving as the ushers come among you to accept the gifts of our congregation. You may also give online via the QR code on the back of the order of service. Thank you.
our closing words? Part three. Okay, we're going to yes. sing part three of the song, Turn the World Around. Yeah. Please stand as you are willing and able. our multi-gen dates we have our traveling music so we end together standing and I ask you if you are comfortable to reach out and touch someone next to you maybe just your elbows something that helps you be connected even if it's the back of the pew next to them some way that we are connected even if it's just energy whatever it is for you <laughs> thank you all so our closing words are called, These Hands Connect Us to One Another by Amy Bowden Friedman and Keith Crone. I just want to have your attention for a second. <laughs> Become aware of the hands that you are holding or you're next to, their warmth, texture, and weight. These same hands reached out for the nourishment of milk. As a child, these hands shakily wrote a name on paper for the first time. These hands have wiped away tears, clenched in anger, waved hello and goodbye countless times, and embraced loved ones. And now these hands are the tangible link that connects us one to another. Look around and see those around us who have experienced so much that is life. These hands have worked, are working, and will continue to work to make the world a better place. Go in peace, go in love, work for justice, go forth and bless the world. Amen. Thank you.